we we've conceded chances, but we haven't really conceded goals as such. There we go, and there's one. <laughs> Why do I say? Why do I say? It? Of course, Harry Kane is going to score that one. So there's one nil. Hi guys, welcome to episode 13 of Championship to Champions with Birmingham City. We are in for an action-packed episode, hopefully. We've got a lot to speak about. I've got my trusty notepad here with a few notes on, including the formation that I want to speak about. I did say that I was going to bring you back for Chelsea and Arsenal. However, I thought I'd bring you back for Tottenham just because of the pure fact that if you look it's it's almost like a battle for seventh between us. Aston Villa have kind of just, just taken off and left us for dead. Um, we'll get to why in a, in a moment. Um, but yeah, so if we get to why we're, we're now seventh and nowhere near European contention, if we take a look at, at where we left off, and we left off at Watford, that's when the panic started to set in a little bit, you know, with a 2-2 loss. I then, we, we then... 1-2-0 against Bournemouth. I didn't change the formation then. I thought with Bournemouth being who they are, we'd, we'd beat them. We went to Man United. Sorry, Man United come to us actually. And as you can see, we, we kind of like, we we we, went, we took it to, to them straight away. Um, sorry about this. Come on, Mark. Whew. Yeah, so we took it to them straight away. We, we were 3-0 up within 25 minutes. And then we just imploded. Complete well and truly. I don't even know what happened there. What can we say? Well, what can I say? I was really, really pissed off, I'll be honest. For us to throw that away after 25 minutes, I'm probably going to try and make something funny out of it, maybe a meme out of it or something like that at the start of the video. So if you see it start of the video, something like this with, the, with the, the highlights, you'll see why. This is when I started to change the formations around and started to panic in terms of tactics. So instead of being like a normal person, a normal FM guy, and doing it in friendlies, you know, maybe in between internationals, which is what I did afterwards, I decided to start experimenting against some of the big top teams, obviously Man United. It wasn't too bad. Um, we looked like we were going to win at one point, obviously 3-0 up. We, we could have been 4 if uh, Comer had stayed on side. The expected goals were a lot better for us. But... It's United, isn't it? Always, it's always going to be United that won that one. That we then went to Liverpool and we lost three-one. Jude Bellingham getting his first goal on his on his return, which is nice. Again, we changed the tactic. I think I'll stay with this now. That's Liverpool. No, we changed the tactic again here. Um, I think I might have gone back a little bit, but I did. I made a few changes. I think I'm, I, I knocked the the fullbacks forward a little bit. Um, maybe changed a few roles in the middle. It looked okay in the first half, and then we just lost it in the second half. We were we were really bad in the second half. We had hardly any chances. We then went to Wolves and we beat them four two, which is good. It's always good to get a win over rivals because we can't do it against Villa. So at least we got it, at least we did it against Wolves. That's one thing for the fans to say. Um, again, another change of formations. And this time I thought I'll go for a Christmas tree. I've been quite experimentative, to be honest. You know, I've been a bit more volatile with my experiments. I've never done this before. This is the first time I've used a Christmas tree. It worked for Wolves. We were okay. Second half was a bit naff. First half we were great, straight out. And it was really bad actually because Zimensky got injured, was replaced by Glenn Kamara, and then he got injured as well. So, we were we were down, basically. I think that's why the second half was quite bad. We then went to Crystal Palace with the same formation and the same tactic and lost. So I thought, actually, I'm going to change it completely now. Um, I took advantage of the international break to have two friendlies. One against Zenit St. Petersburg. Second one against a team I'm not even going to try and pronounce. KV Kotrak or something like that. And this is where I've brought in a new tactic. And I've been really, really, this is really outside of my 
safety net really in terms of tactics. I've never done a tactic without a striker, but I quite like the idea of this. I've got on my pad one like this, the formation like this, except for what it was is that I brought a striker up there instead. So it was kind of like that. However, I don't think it gives the protection to the um, defence. We're already quite exposed on the wings. For us to then lose, oh, misclick. For us to then lose another player there, uh, we, we'd have just been overrun. So I think this is a better formation. Um, Curtis Jones is really good as a shadow striker. I'm really happy with it so far. I haven't really played a Premier League side yet, so don't hold me to it. We might lose this against Tottenham. We probably will lose against Tottenham, but there's only one way we can find out. We need to win this game, really. If we're gonna, if we've got any chance of it in European and it's in sixth, fourth, fifth, we need to win these games. Because if we look at the schedule, I know I was going to bring us back for Chelsea and Arsenal. That was the one that was going to bring us back for. But I thought Tottenham is just we. It's a must win, so it needs to be on. You know, when, when the lads, I thought, why not? Because the lads don't don't turn up. Anyway. They're not, not going to turn up either way, whether they're on camera or not. So, if we go for the the match, and I've just realised I haven't really told you what the formation is or who's playing. So what I'll do is I'll do it here. Apologies, guys. I'm quite excited to get into it. Obviously, we've got Sam Johnston. Kipri, Comert, Lala. And Lala's in because Lard is injured for four to five weeks. Stupidly, he got injured in the last friendly. Um, I should have took him off. Didn't take him off and then he got injured. So, that's my own fault. I apologise. Joe Quinn as my deep line playmaker. Amavi as my left complete wing back. And he's just pushed forward a bit with Lala. So, they kind of overlap. Not as much. I don't really have an overlap um, tactic on. I don't have the instruction on, but they do play well. We've then got a midfield three. I've already said joking, actually. Midfield two of eight, Bensar and Bellingham. Bellingham's great as a Mazzola. Love him. I want to get him back next season. It's not going to happen. He's a wonder kid, so... I've already tried it with Lard, and Man United won him 122 million. So I kind of just went, yeah, I'll we'll see myself out. Uh, we've then got Zimanski and Lozek on the wings as two inside forwards on attack and Curtis Jones as the shadow striker. So if we just um, take a little look and see how we get on in, in the match. So far in the friendlies we've been really good. We, we've conceded chances but we haven't really conceded goals as such. There we go and there's one. <laughs> Why do I say? Why do I say it? Of course, Harry Kane is going to score that one. So there's 1-0. Um, conceded goals. We do concede them, obviously. You've just seen. So we're now 1-0 down. And it looks like this formation. It might work against foreign teams. It's definitely not working against Tottenham. Tottenham are all over us at the moment. What I might try... I'm, just, I'm going to leave it because my problem is... And I bet a lot of you guys will like it as well. When you start with a tactic, you lose one or two... And then you panic. And I do it all the time. And at the moment, with stuff like this, I'm like, ooh, at the, hey, 1-1, one, one. Lozek. And what the guys are doing at the moment is just, it's tiki-taka. It's Barcelona, basically. Very nice. But yeah, what I was saying, uh, just rubbing my nose, apologies, uh, is that whenever I lose one or two with a formation, I automatically go, right, that tactic does not work. And then I'll get in panic mode, Oh, it's 2-1, Zimanski. Fantastic. And now I look like a tactical genius. I lured them in, I lured Tottenham in with an easy goal, with a first goal. The guards down, they're thinking, right, easy game against Birmingham. And then, pow, pow! Two goals, out of nowhere. Thank you, and we'll take this. But yeah, so it was like that anyway, guys. Um, and I was really panicking. In between this episode and the last episode, I was, I was thinking, right... This isn't going to be entertainment. We, we were sick for one point, um, which looked really good. And then we just went on a really bad run. So I'm glad that it looks like we're, we're finding our feet again. Um, we've got a, a tactic that looks okay. Looks like we're containing Tottenham. We've, we've played really well the first half. Obviously, when I says that we were, weren't going to let in, FM listened again. Um, the curse of Mark. And my big fat mouth. So I'm going to stop 
Now, I'm not going to say anything about anything like that. There we go, there's 3-1. And Christian Pedersen. He's not really been in the um, in the, the team lately, Christian Pedersen. He's lost his place to him, RV. But when he brings out bangers like that, he does give me a lot of food for thought because that was a fantastic goal. First touch, wallop. And we are now 3-1 up against Tottenham at home. And it looks a lot better. We are looking to avenge a 5-4 loss against Tottenham. Which was another one that was kind of devastating. I was enjoying the game because it was end-to-end -end and it looked like anyone could score. And obviously everyone did score because it was 5-4. But we were on the losing side. So it would be nice to be on the winning side against Tottenham. We need to beat Villa next year. We are currently one loss down to them. A loss and a draw. Um, the big sides like Aston Villa. Aston Villa? What am I saying? Um, so I was watching the game while I was trying to talk then. The big, the big sides like Liverpool, Chelsea, Man United, Man City. If we, if we get done on the double, that's fine. I'm not expecting us to win. Maybe get a draw out of one of them. We have got Chelsea and Arsenal coming up. Arsenal are nowhere near the top at the moment. They're, they are playing better. They're nowhere near bottom again. And that's because Henri's been sacked. But they are nowhere near the top. So if we can beat them. Because they're, they're playing okay. They're not They're not in a, a really good bit of a purple. You know, they haven't got a purple patch going on. They still do lose. Which is good. But so do we. So take from it what you will. This is looking too good to be honest. I don't really want to change too many players and, and upset the the cohesion at the moment. But my big thing at the moment is that I need a new... Come come the end of the season, Curtis Jones is going, Lard's going. Aaron Connolly, I'm not that bothered about. He doesn't play anyway, so I'm not that bothered. So we need a new right back and a shadow striker slash attacking midfielder, Ivan Sanchez. <sighs> Good save there. Is that Larice? I'm clicking, I'm clicking. Oh, Ivan. Um, good, really good save then. Really, really good save. But as you can see, guys, this is a really good formation. Really good tactic. Really happy about it. Um, Strikerless seems to work. Don't know what Kenny Lala got the yellow for there. Must have been a tackle off, off camera or something like that. I didn't see it. 3-1, really good. Really, really happy about that. Yeah, that was great, guys. Really, really good. Um, Fantastic. Jubilee. Jubilee? Jubilant. That's the word. What I will also mention as well, and I should have mentioned this at the start, but I was a bit excited to talk about this formation and the schedule and get it out of the way and, and get into Tottenham. So uh, our new striker, hopefully, next season, is going to be Ali Ackman. He's now got a cap for Turkey. And I can imagine him getting more caps for Turkey. He's playing consistently in the Bundesliga and the Europa League. So he's going to be playing. Um, he'll be coming back from Schalke. I'm going to train him to be a shadow striker in the form of Curtis Jones. I just think for the stats that he's got, he's really good. Really, really good. And I got him for free. So, yeah, that's great, that is. And if he doesn't come back and the work permit gets um, rejected, I'll just sell him and I'll use the money. Yeah, there isn't really anything else that I need to speak to you about until the next game, which is against Brentford. So we'll just uh, pop up there. Cheers, guys. Okay, guys, and we are back for the second match of the episode. Um, as you may notice, it's a different day for recording. I'm in a new, new attire. It'd be a bit weird if I was in the same clothes. Um, it kind of went a bit late last night, so I thought go to bed and then do it today on a Saturday. If we come back now, I haven't brought us back to the tactic screen just yet, as we've got a few things in between epi in between episodes, sorry, in between the match matches that, that has happened. So the first thing is is that Curtis Jones is potentially going to join us on a permanent transfer. It's going to be twenty seven million, which is twelve million up front, fifteen million in uh, instalments over three years, and then forty percent of the player sale to Liverpool, which is quite high, I'll be honest. Like really, really high. Not very happy about it, but I don't expect us to sell him by the end of the series. If we do sell him, we're going to probably sell him at a loss. 
because we're going to lose on the 40%. Unless he sells for about 60 million. His, his contract will be 66k per week. So he's, he's got quite a, a jump up. Um, if he gets five England caps, he'll go up to 80k. So hopefully Gareth Southgate overlooks him for quite a bit. We've also got that another one that's happened is that uh, the youth candidates have come in for this year's youth intake. And if we take a look at the ones that I've signed, so there's two youth candidates that I've been quite excited about. Um, and I've also just noticed that Tang, Tangin, I'm just going to call him Tangin, has come on quite a bit from last year. He's now one and a half stars and up to four and a half stars potential, which is great. I expect to see him coming into our squad maybe two years. I'll send him out alone next year because I think he needs the game time. As you can see, he's quite nice for a left back. He's already getting really good stats. 18 bravery, 17 determination. He's mental for a 16-year-old. Um, and it is part of his mentals, actually. Yeah, There's a pun. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the two that I'm really excited about from this year are Pino the Filipino, Christian Pino. He is a winger that can play on left or right, and he can also play through the middle. He's got quite nice technicals already, decent determination, good flair, decent work rate. His physicals, nothing to write home about, could be better, lacking, but they will get better. Again, one star potential, one star potential? I wouldn't even look at him. One star current ability, three and a half star potential. So we'll keep an eye on Pino the Filipino. See who he gets on. And the second one, it was a bit underwhelming to be honest. Um, I was expecting us to have a few more players come through. We only really had two decent players. I mean, we've got a couple come through that are three star and two and a half star. But the ones that are good were Pino and then Henry. So this is Hakim Henry. He's a striker. Better physicals than Pino. I mean, not not much better. Five foot eight as a deep line forward, not too bad. Good teamwork, good determination, good flair, good technique. So really, all my youth squad, all they're going to do is run up the wing, or they're just going to keep trying Rabonas and over the top rainbows and stuff like that. Ronaldo chops because they've all got flair. They've all got technique. They're just not very good elsewhere. So we've just got a team of, of young Ronaldos. So you remember him at, when he was at United? I think it was the first season. Before we got Ench, before you, you know Ronaldo got Ench, and he'd run up the wing, he'd do a few skills, and then he'd get tackled or, or basically knocked off the ball. And people thought it was a bit soft. Little did they know, eh? So if we get into the game, um, we're going to keep with the formation that we had against Tottenham, which is nice. We've got a quite a... I think I, I believe it's a nice. I, I like this formation. It's a good formation. Um, it played really well against Tottenham. We had we gave them a few chances, gave them as many chances as they gave us, but we we were quite clinical. So if we look at the squad, it's it's a unchanged squad. Lala is still in for Lard because Lard's still out for. He's now out for five to eleven days, which means he'll be back for Chelsea and Arsenal, which is good. Because we really need him. Joe Quinn is really impressing me. Fantastic player for free. Bellingham keeps his place. And I know last game that I said he was Mazala. He's actually advanced playmaker. So apologies for that. But if we get into the squad. Well sorry. Into the game. It's an unchanged squad. So we've got Johnston. Comert. Kipri. Amavi. Joe Quinn. Lala. Eight. Benesser. Bellingham. You beautiful man. Uh, Lozek. Jones. And Zimensky. We are looking quite tasty for uh, Brentford. I was going to say Bournemouth then. don't know what I was thinking about that. And it is away. So it's a six-pointer really. We beat them at home earlier in the season. We need to beat them to stay within touching distance of sixth. So I think it's Brighton at the moment who are sixth. We've got a game in hand on them. But they've got six points. Yeah. So if we win this one, we go up to 49 points. Brighton are on 52. Villa are on 53. So we, we desperately need to to win this. And so far, I was just about to say, it looks like we're not going to... We were almost going to carry on the uh, theme of letting in straight away. And then I'd have had a choice between Tottenham or Brentford on what I want to put as my start of the 
start of the video clip because I like to to have some kind of start a video clip, you know, just just to show you what what you're in for. I don't know if it's any good. I don't know if it resonates with FM players like it does with other gaming communities. If it doesn't go, you just just let me know and I'll get rid of it. So far, it's been a bit of a, a yeah, it's not been good. We've had no no highlights. I'm gonna go attacking because that has been awful. One shot on target is awful. Zemensky knocks it in. There was nobody there. Oh, Bellingham has got the ball. Right, Benesir. Bellingham to Lala to Joe Quinn. And I do like how, how we, we bring it forward. There we go. Curtis Jones. Lovely. That was fantastic ticker tacker stuff. And he's proven his worth already. I, I'm very happy. And I will I'll pay more than £27 million for him, to be honest. Just to bring it forward like that. To go past the player and then just take it on his right foot and wallop. And we are now 1-0 up. And things are looking... A lot better, a lot more rosy. Hopefully we can win this one. Um, I need to stop saying stuff like this because every time I say that things are looking well or things are going great, things go downhill. So yeah, I'm going to keep quiet now. I'm just going to observe the game. I'm going to see what's going on. Come on, Bellingham. Oh, almost. That was almost goal of the season, that was. For a little run like that. And if it had just dinked it over the keeper, that would have been great. So, we are winning 1-0. We are the better team, I'd say. I know we haven't got as many shots as Brentford, but keeping them to shots that aren't on target, that could be shots from outside of the box. We don't know, which is good. Lozek. Lozek, he's okay at the moment. Um, I don't think he's unhappy anymore. He, he he won Young Player of the Month this, this month, so I'll kind of put my arm around him and says, well done. And the unhappiness has gone to slightly positive, which is great. So we've got a, a nice cohesion again now. The squad's better, which is good because we're coming up to the run-up of the final, the final bits of the season, the final parts of the season. We've got seven games left after this. We've got two tough games in Chelsea and Arsenal, one after the other. Oh, that's a great goal. Ivan Tony. And that has just stopped me in my tracks. What am I going to do? Sugar. Oh, well, I'm going to have to shout and say, uh, demand more. Okay, guys, that's, <laughs> that's put a spanner in the works. Um, I was expecting six points from this episode. Let's just hope we can get a goal here. I haven't brought anyone on. Jesus, sorry, guys, I've just been talking. I'm an idiot. Where's Wilson? They could, they could bring this now. They could, oh, my God. I'm an idiot. They could bring it to us now, and it could be 2 1. Nice one, Lozek. Tap, tap the uh, yellow card, mate. I'm an idiot. Guy. We deserved this 1 1 because I wasn't watching our fitness. What a fool. Okay. Um, hands on hips, not happy. Let's just see what the guys say. Um, I don't care about that, to be honest. Gutted. Yeah, I'm gutted as well, Tyler. I apologise for that. Roshan. Why is it not loving it? Oh, it was a 1-1, one -one, Roshan. What are you on about? It was awful. The first half was, like, shocking. For once, for a better word, it was shite. I'd be concerned if we weren't creating any chances, the girls will come. Yes, cheers, Ron. Mr. Ron York. And with that, oh, yeah. As you can see, you know, he'd want 82 million for Lard. It's not going to happen. We're not going to be able to pay that much for him. So I'm just going to keep... Prodding throughout the, the rest of the season. Maybe declaring him as the transfer target. See if we can't get him to be a bit unsettled. I mean, why would he want to come to Birmingham from Man United? It's not going to happen, is it, guys? Okay, guys. If we have a look at the competition now and see where we're going to end it. We are now 7th. Ah, there's a European contention by the looks. Is there a way we can take a look and see at the rules? I just want to take a look at the rules and see... If seven forgets, aha, we may get the Euro Europa Conference League playoff. So things are looking rosy. Things are looking a lot better now. I I don't feel half as bad as I did. If we can cement our place in seven, I told them we've got a game in hand on us actually. Ooh, that's bad. Uh, but yeah, if we can 
cement our place in seventh and maybe look to go into sixth, we can at least go into the Europa Conference. So it means Europe. It means something. We're, we're going to get something. Um, it's not going to be Europa League, unfortunately. We've got no chance of going into the Champions League. But we've got Europe next year to look forward to. So we'll be playing probably the fourth best players in fourth best teams like Kazakhstan. You know, Slovakia playoff champions. I don't know who's in the Europa Conference, to be honest. If we just have a look, actually, who's in the Europa Conference. Can we have a look? No, let's... Uh, how do we get to the Europa Conference? Europe... Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Champions League, Conference League, that's the one. So we could... Oh, well, Arsenal are in Oh, that goes to show. You know, it says it all, really, Arsenal in So we could be playing people like Seville. Sporting people, teams, sorry, like Seville, Sporting CP, AEK from Greece, um, Victoria, where are they from? They are from, is that Czech? Yeah, that's a Czech. Okay, so we, we've got a chance of winning it. If Arsenal can win it, we can win it. I say after we lost to Arsenal, 2-1. Let's not remember that. So if we take a look at the schedule... And where we're going to come back, I think it's going to have to be Everton and Southampton now. Or it might just be Southampton and, and going into a season review. Because if we've got Everton and Southampton, then it's going to go on for a while. So yeah, we'll come back at Southampton. Hopefully we're in a good spot. We're 7th slash 6th. Maybe 5th. Come on Villa, start losing. And we can take it away. And this can almost be like a trophy parade of we finish this high in Southampton. It's going to be uh, a nice game. They're 14th. The run-up to Southampton is going to be awful. Terrifying. Leicester at home. We could probably win. Chelsea, we've got no chance. Arsenal. Oh, Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. Now, I would say that we'd, we'd have a chance against them, but they beat us last time at home. And they've got they've had an upturn of, of fortunes. They've got the one about the third manager. Mancini now. So if we take a look at the schedule, I know they've got on since they've had Mancini. Not that well. Not that well. Although I can't believe that they've played Liverpool so close together. I don't understand how that's worked instead of the schedule. It must be Europa. But yeah. Okay, we might beat Arsenal. Fingers crossed. Um, then we've got Burnley at home. And I'm pretty sure we lost to Burnley. So... Man City at home as well. And then Everton away. So, it might, <laughs> it might be Europe that we go to. It might be mid-table, guys, because it's, it's one of those, isn't it? It could either go really well. The tactic could come together. Didn't come together against Brentford. I don't know what happened there. I'm going to put it down to fitness. Jude Bellingham, 6.3. Oh. What I'm going to do, actually, I've got two deep line playmakers. Two deep line. I've got two playmakers in, in the formation, two close together. So I'm going to change him to a defensive midfielder. Just stick him there. Joe Green, and see what happens. There we go. So if we just take a look now, we are seventh. It's, it's looking good, guys. It's looking really good. We're almost at the end of season two. We're bringing in Curtis Jones on a permanent. Ethan Lord, to be decided. I haven't got the money for. Might have to ask the club. Aaron Connolly's going to go. I'm not going to bring in Aaron Connolly on a permanent because I've, I've got no space for him, really. He, he, plus, he don't play. Um, David Deliver. How's he getting on? David Della Vibora. He looks a good player, actually. Another left. I think we've got an abundance of left backs coming through, which is great. Just means that we're going to be quite heavy on the left. Not too bad. He can be trained to go on the right as well. But he looks really good. He looks like a really good player. I hope Roger Taylor training him well. Okay, guys. I'm rambling again. I've gone on for too long. It's now 15 minutes into the second half of this recording. I've done nothing but talk nonsense for the last five minutes. But if you have uh, enjoyed the episode, please do like and subscribe. Um, comments are very welcome. I do respond to every comment. If you've got any tips or tricks or any players that you think will improve the squad, please let me know. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.